Welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. It's hard to keep up with the real estate market these days. One month, it seems housing prices are falling. The next month, prices are creeping back up. A lot of it has to do with interest rates, of course. Interest rates that the Fed has increased 10 straight times in a little over a year. Another factor is where you live. So some lenders have come up with something called the 1% down payment mortgage. Today, we're talking with Jeff Ostrowski. He's with Bankrate. He says 1% mortgages are a clever way lenders are getting potential home buyers into the market but there are some pros and cons you need to know about this is on your side with susan campbell and gary harper an arizona's family originals podcast okay welcome to the on your side podcast i'm gary harper and i'm susan campbell what's going on today miss susan Oh, so much stuff. Planning for all kinds of things. You have a smile on your face, which is good because you're hungry and you're tired, you said earlier. I know. I admitted that right as I walked in. I said, oh my goodness, I haven't had anything to eat except yes. some Sour Patch Kids, which is absolutely the grown-up lunch, yeah. you know, of champions. Yes. Very nutritious. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's causing the exhaustion too. You're, yeah, because you were yawning and you had hunger pains uh -huh. at the same time. But this podcast is giving me energy. I'm really oh, excited about it. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're talking about mortgages. And uh, this is a fascinating topic because it's something that came across our desk that we haven't heard of before. 1% yeah. one, 1 mortgages? 1% one down payment. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah down payment. Um, I hadn't heard of that at all. This is, you traditionally think 20%. Yeah. And then you get into other spaces where, yeah. you know, you can go a little bit lower, a little bit lower. And all of a sudden, 1% sounds like, woo, it's let's crazy. learn more. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, I mean, this is a good thing. It sounds like it is, but there's always, you know, some cons that come along with it. So today we've got a real estate expert with us on the podcast, Jeff Ostrowski. He's, a, like I said, a real estate expert for over 20 years, and he's with Bankrate.com. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm, I'm great. Uh, and yeah, I mean, no, nothing uh, that works through those hunger pains more than talking about mortgage rates and down payments. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might get a headache. It might go from a hunger pains to a headache. Oh, who, gosh. Who knows? I'm going to be dreaming of all the things I'll cook in a new home. Yeah. Maybe. Will that help? <laughs> well, there you I go. Don't know. Uh, I don't I, know. I like it. It's a nice combo there. Um, so we're in Arizona and you live in Florida. Uh, how's the real estate market down there? I'm just curious. Well, the, the Florida real estate market is still going really strong. It's uh, so all the momentum has kind of shifted for before the pandemic, all, all the, the home price appreciation was happening on the coast. So California, Seattle, New York, Boston, then the pandemic came and, and uh, people started moving around the country. And so the, the Mountain West saw all the momentum there for a couple of years during the pandemic. Everyone from California and Seattle was moving to Arizona, Nevada, and Utah, and Idaho, and driving up prices. And now I, I think you've, you've sort of hit the limits of affordability uh, there, there in your part of the country. And, and now it's the, the, the Sun Belt, and especially the Southeast of Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, that are really seeing strong strong price appreciation. Is that things might finally uh, be plateauing in Florida, but it's kind of hard to tell. So as homeowners already know, in order to get into a house, you have to put money down you have to you have to put money in the kitty it's like going into a poker game you can't play for free you gotta you gotta offer something right um and some people don't really have a lot of money to put down but there's something called a one percent down payment um which kind of intrigues us here on the on your side podcast so i don't think a lot of lenders offer this but who's offering it why and is it a good idea well, so the two biggest lenders in the country, Rocket Mortgage and United Wholesale Mortgage, just rolled this out uh, in the, the past month or so. And they're really piggybacking off something that already exists. So the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have these programs for people who, who make moderate incomes. And uh, so those programs have been around for decades. And it, as long as you make 80% of or less of the, the median income in your area, you can qualify for one of these loans and put just 3% down. And so what's new here is that uh, Rocket and United Wholesale have, have come out with, uh, with an innovation, which is, hey, the, the mortgage market has really slowed. 
Uh, so we need business. And also a, a lot of first time buyers, especially are struggling with affordability because home prices are still high, mortgage rates have shot way up. So the, they're both offering to to cover 2% of the 3% down payment. And then the, the home buyer has to come up with only 1%. Um, so it's uh, the people who are gonna qualify this are, are pretty limited. I mean, you have to you have to have an income that's low enough that you meet the eligibility requirements, but that's high enough that you can actually afford the the payments because they're you know the the underwriting is is still the the same. You have to be able to afford the mortgage to to be approved for this program. Um, so, but but for those folks who do fall in into those parameters, uh, the, this is definitely worth looking at. Rocket Mortgage is huge. Why would they want to do that? Why would a mortgage company or a lender want to put down 2% and only have the homeowner put down 1%? Why would they do that? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so back during the, the pandemic, we, we saw mortgage rates plummet to record lows. I mean, you could get a 30-year loan for for under 3%. And so that created a boom. There were there were a ton of home sales as a result of that. There was a, a refinancing flood, um, and so all of the the mortgage lenders had to really ramp up to to meet that demand. Um, and then mortgage rates doubled. I mean, we're now close to to seven percent on the the average mortgage rate. So that means the you know the refinancing is is effectively dead. I mean, you can there, there's still people refinancing, but the the you know people who are refinancing to lock in a super low rate are no longer are motivated to do so. And then home sales have really slowed pretty dramatically. I mean, they're down like twenty and thirty percent uh, year over year. And so the, these big lenders just need some business. I mean, and this is a way, they're seeing this as a way to drum up business. Um, the, the Rocket executive I spoke to said, uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, we, we like this from a marketing standpoint, but it's, it's also expensive for the lender. Um, so I, I mean, I, I'm assuming that, that Rocket thinks they can, you know, they, they can at least break even or, or make, maybe make a little money on, on this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it is. It is sort of a head scratcher. Why would uh, why would a, a big lender that's uh, that's trying to make a profit go out and, and give this much money to to borrowers? Um, United Wholesale has they're a little more limited, so they're offering two percent only up to a certain amount, um, and and so uh, it's their their program is not quite as generous. But yeah, both of these programs are, are very generous, and I can only assume that the. Uh, these companies just want to, uh, you know, get, generate some marketing buzz and generate some business at a time when the, the housing market and, and, you know, mortgage originations have slowed dramatically. The cost to get into a house, a down payment can be a giant barrier for a lot of families. You know, if you don't have um, that chunk of change, the dream of home ownership is feels really unattainable. I'm curious if you think that other um, smaller lenders are going to jump into this game too because they see this is where families' finances are or if this is just these big companies able to absorb kind of the blow of backing and contributing to a down payment. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I'm, I haven't seen any other mortgage lenders come up with precisely this this uh, twist where they're, they're putting up a big chunk of the down payment. Um, but mortgage lenders have been getting creative in, in all kinds of ways over the past year. You know, for two years ago, they they didn't need to do anything because the you know mortgage rates were so low that that, that was all the rationality but they needed to take out a mortgage. Um, now they have to come up with something. Um, but so I, I would say that uh, you know twenty percent is the is the gold standard, and if you want the the best combination of, uh, of fees and rate and and um, overall costs you're you want to come up with 20 percent but i mean the, the median home price in the u.s is close to 400 grand 20 percent of that obviously is eighty thousand dollars not a lot of people have that just sitting around especially not a lot of first-time buyers um, but th there are a lot of workarounds so if you're in the service or if you're a veteran you can get a va loan with zero down um, the, the federal housing administration has fha loans for three and a half percent down and then these fannie and freddie programs will let you get a home for for three percent down um so th there are options there are a number of options for uh for buyers with who who haven't saved up a lot for a down payment 
But um, Rocket and United uh, Wholesale both point out that uh, you know this the down payment, as you described, is a big barrier for a lot of first-time buyers, and that's that's a, a reason that a lot of people are are staying renters and not moving into homeownership. I think the buzzword that you mentioned earlier was marketing. This is great for marketing. Um, the CEO of Rocket had indicated, and I mean, look, it's got us generating a conversation about it and we're talking about it and we're getting um you know rocket's name out there just by talking about this so i think that was pretty clever on their part to come up with this um so just so people our listeners understand um this program if you qualify it's three percent down which is standard if you don't have uh, if you go through fha or uh any, any kind of government program but uh, it's still three percent but um, the mortgage company would put down 2% and then the home buyer only has to put down 1%, but there are some income parameters. Um, so in Atlanta, I think you had indicated that it's 80% of the household income. You can't make 80, let's see, how does that work again, Jeff, uh, to qualify? Yeah, so it's limited. So I'm just looking at the Fannie Mae um, area median income workup tool for, so for the Phoenix metro area, it's showing the area median income is 88,800. And so then 80% of that is just over 71,000. So at least according to these numbers that I'm looking at, you would have to make 71,000 or, or less, the, the borrowers. So if you've got, a, if it's a single borrower, it would be a, a limit of 71,000. Or if if you've got a, a couple applying for the mortgage, it would be combined income of less than 71,000. So, um, I, I mean, the, that's, uh, you know, a modest income. It's certainly a, a livable wage, but it's but modest. Yep. Um, and so it's it's 80% of the the, uh, the income in the, the area that you're, you're buying. You can't make more than that and qualify for, for this program. But, you know, by the same token, it's when you've got an income of that amount, it gets a little bit harder to, to make the numbers work in terms of, of qualifying for the loan. One thing I really like about this program is, um, if it wasn't around, if you went through a standard FHA loan and you put down the standard 3%, you have to pay what's called a PMI, which is mortgage insurance, which means your mortgage insurance will pay off mm -hmm. the, the mortgage if you default or you lose your job and you can't pay and you know, you're know you booted out of the house. I think the really cool thing about this is the lender pays the mortgage insurance. So that could be up to $250 a month, depending on how much you put down and the price of the home. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So that's uh, what FHA loans are are a great option for for buyers who who maybe don't have great credit, uh, who have credit scores in the 600s and don't have a lot of money to put down. So you can get an FHA loan with uh, as little as three and a half percent down. But the downside is just to what you mentioned: the um, the private mortgage uh, insurance on FHA loans is very high. The Biden administration just lowered that a bit, but it, it it's still high. And so you're right that the the benefits of this uh, it, of these programs that Rocket and UWM are, are marketing is that they're, they're saying they're going to cover the, the private mortgage insurance. And so the, if you put down less than 20% on a, a house, uh, the, the lender is going to require you to pay what's called PMI, private mortgage insurance. And that's there to protect not, not you as the borrower, but to, to protect the lender. So, and, and as you said, if you, it, if I buy a house uh, and I default, uh, that that private mortgage insurance um, covers the the lender. So, and it, it is pretty expensive, and it, it's one of the reasons that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, twenty percent is sort of the gold standard. If you can put twenty percent down, you can avoid all of those uh, the annoying little extra charges that are just going to make it harder for you to uh, to make your budget every month. Yeah, that extra charge doesn't feel good if mm. you are yeah. watching that go to really. I mean, nothing that benefits you in the end, right? It, it, the only benefit is, I, uh, yeah, I guess when you think about it, there is no benefit to you. It's a benefit to the the, the lender. It got it, you into the house. It's it's well, it got you into the house. That's I guess that one benefit. But if you lose your job, you can't pay whatever, then the mortgage insurance will pay off the lender. So it's like regular insurance, you know. Yeah, so, absolutely. You, you hope you never have to use it. Absolutely. Any insurance. Um, we talked about this one percent uh, program. For other people who might not qualify for 1% um, loans through either of these two companies, but are still maybe on the house hunt or searching for a mortgage, what is your best advice to go find a good uh, lender? How do we find the best terms? How do we make sure that we are going to be able to uh, cover the cost and afford everything we need to? Right, right. So, um, yeah, if you don't have 
20% down, you're a first time buyer, and maybe you're just sort of right on the cusp of, of qualifying. Um, so I, these, uh, these programs with the one that are requiring only 1% down are, are a great deal. If you don't qualify for those, um, I, I mentioned VA loans. So if you're eligible for a VA loan, that's, that's something to consider. Um, that those are available with no money down. Um, FHA loans are also a good option. So the three and a half percent is the minimum down payment there with the, the downside that you're, you're paying more in, in monthly mortgage insurance premiums. Um, but it's, if you want to get into a house, that's, that's a way to do it. Um, and then these, uh, these Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac, uh, home ready and home possible, um, loans with, which require a 3% down payment are available to, through any lender. So, um, you know, the Rocket and UWM just happen to be the two biggest, and they're they're the ones uh, doing the, this one percent promotion. But it, any lender uh, can can hook you up with uh, with loans through those programs. So yes, there are plenty of options out there for for home buyers who, who haven't uh, come up with five or ten or twenty percent down. Um, so it, I would say if, if you're ready to buy. Uh, if you're, if you think you're going to be in the home for five to seven years, if your your financial situation looks stable, then I, I would say yes, go ahead. Don't don't be deterred. I know we were just uh, talking about the you know private mortgage insurance is this sort of just throwing away money to for the benefit of your lender, but it, as you said, it gets you into the house and uh, and homeownership is a, over time is going to be a great wealth building uh, vehicle for for most people. Um, so. It's, uh, I, I guess the, the message is it, it's, it takes a little more work. It's, uh, it, there's, you know, just some more, some more headaches that, that you have to deal with, some more hurdles you have to clear, but you, you definitely can get a home for less than 20% down. And, and these, the, these, uh, lending programs are all, are all perfectly legit and credible and, and a good way to get into homeownership. What's your take on when you're shopping around for these mortgages uh, and you're trying to find the best rate? Is there a, a pro or a con to sticking with maybe a local credit union versus one of these giant companies? Or how do you determine which is best for you? Well, shopping around is really crucial. So for years now, we've known that if you compare at least three offers, you could potentially save thousands of dollars over the life of the loan. Um, Freddie Mac, one of the, the mortgage giants that I, I've been mentioning, did some research of its own. And they showed that last year, when mortgage rates were really volatile, the benefit of shopping around went up even more just because there, there was so much of a gap between, you know, you might get three offers and, and one might be 7% and one might be all the way down at six and a quarter percent. Um, so now in the, this time of mortgage rate volatility, it's important to, more important than ever to compare offers, to try to get three to five offers. And uh, you're right, you should look around, you compare the the big name lenders, but then also look at a local credit union. If you've got a, a banking relationship with a, a, a bank that's still making mortgages, uh, check out their offer. Um, but just just make sure you you compare th the three to five offers, and uh, you can you can potentially save thousands of dollars over the the life of the loan. I wanted to circle back to the one percent down pay <clears throat> down payment uh, program. I feel that this program is probably not going to be around a long time. It just rolled out last month. Um, we're talking about it, which kind of checks that off their list for, you know, marketing purposes. But I have a feeling if you're really interested in this, you should probably jump in it now, but just realize there are parameters like income and some other things attached to it. But if you're interested, you should probably do it now rather than later, because I have a feeling this program is not going to be around, uh, you know, for, for years. Yeah, yeah, I, w I would agree with you. I mean, who knows how long it's going to last, but it's, uh, I, I would say its lifespan is probably going to be months rather than years. Um, so if, if you're ready, then, then yes, definitely look into it. Um, and, and one thing I didn't mention, but that uh, I, I should, there, pretty much every state in the country has a, a system of, of down payment assistance and, uh, and other programs for first time buyers. So uh, I, I would say your your listeners should also look into that. And there it, it's that that's another um, another thing that's going to require homework, it's going to be a project. But if you're if you do some legwork and and check out the, uh, the, the state down payment assistance program, um, that, that can definitely help as well. And, and so you can you can combine some of these different offers and 
and potentially come up with thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars in assistance that really helps get, get you over that hump into homeownership. Yeah, well, that's I like the there. sound of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, for I, sure. People forget about that. I mean, they have these agencies, you know, to help governmental um, agencies to, to help out and yeah, give them a try. Uh, hey, Jeff, listen, we appreciate the fact that you joined us on the On Your Side podcast and told us about this 1% down payment. Um, if people want to know more about you or bankrate.com, how do people find out, um, you know, throw out some social media or any websites you want to do? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so go on to bankrate.com. You can compare lenders on our site. So we, we have a breakdown of the, the Arizona program for first time buyers. Um, and I, I wrote a piece about these uh, 1% mortgages and how they work. And we've got links to the uh, the income guidelines on the, the Fannie Mae website. Um, so yeah, go to bankrate.com and just click on our, our mortgages uh, page and you, you can uh, you can learn everything you want to know and more about all this stuff. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. I, I feel so educated in the real estate yeah. realm now. So hey, thanks so much, Jeff. Appreciate you joining us. And uh, right. next time we're talking thanks, real estate, we'll, we'll have you back on. All right. Have a great one. Okay. You too. Thank you. The On Your Side podcast is produced by Brad Denny. Our audio engineer and editor is Todd Martin. Segment producer is Colin Stanton. And I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. If you have a problem you can't resolve, maybe we can't. Send us a message through azfamily.com or our AZ Family mobile app. Look for the On Your Side section and leave us a message. Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Side podcast. And if you like it, leave us a review. We'll see you next week. On Your Side is on Good Morning Arizona every weekday morning at 6.45 and 7 o'clock and every weekday evening on Good Evening Arizona at 4 and 5 o'clock. You can also catch it on Arizona's Family News at 9 on 3TV every weeknight.